Hey, and welcome to the next section of Mastering Vardin 8. In this section, we'll take a detailed look into how Vardin projects are built and packaged in such a way that commonly makes the most sense. As Maven is nowadays among Gradle the most commonly used build tool with Vardin, and in general with any Java project, we will begin by declaring a multi module Maven project that supports Vardin development the best way. After we have set up our project structure correctly, we utilize Vardin Maven plugin for compiling the widget set and theme related resources. Next, we're going to see how different parts of Vardin related code should be split into our project structure so that we don't, for example, deploy unnecessary widget set compilation related code to our server. So, welcome to the first video about understanding multi-module Maven project structure. In this video, we will establish a new Maven project consisting of various sub-modules, out of which everyone has a clear role and purpose. We begin this video by looking into how the separation of backend is done from the frontend. Next, we will talk about why it makes sense to have certain static parts of the Vardin UI separated into a separate widget set module. Next, we will talk about the deployment and how to create one deployable artifact that contains all other modules. Lastly, we will create an example project setup through which you can get your own example application foundation running. Before really getting our hands dirty, let's have a few words about the theory. With multi-module Maven projects, we always need a root project, a parent, that looks after its children. This root project is always of type palm. That, according to Maven, can support child modules. If you are starting your project really from a scratch, without any existing backend system, and you want to include your backend related code into your Maven build, you can begin by declaring a module for your backend resources. Often this module implements the actual backend business logic, the stuff that your application is really about. The backend project should be such that it doesn't know anything about Vardin and it has no dependencies to Vardin whatsoever. Next, as we're talking about Vardin here, to be fair, let's just dedicate another Maven job module for our Vardin project. This project is all about Vardin and all about the actual UI. All our UI code should go in this module, so this module should not have anything to do with your actual backend logic or anything that your application business wise is about, but purely the things that go in this UI module are only about the UI, nothing else. As both of these ends need to be able to exchange some information, we need something in between. This something is often called the Commons project. The classes that can potentially be serialized and sent over the wire from one end to another. If you're using REST, the things in this middle module could be, for example, your DTOs. Or if you're Java EE guy and you're using, for example, EJBs, the things in the middle module could be the service client of your backend EJBBs. In any case, these are something that are not used only by the UI, but also by the backend, and the backend hence needs to be aware of this stuff. If we assume that we declare some kind of a service client, the middle module can contain an interface that the UI module knows how to invoke and the backend module knows how to implement. According to the object-oriented design principles, this is just the simple inversion of control. So instead of UI directly depending on a concrete implementation of the backend resource, we instead declare an interface that the backend can then freely implement. From UI point of view, we're only interested in what kind of services the interface can provide for us. Finally, from Vardin point of view, 
as we already discussed in previous section, part of the modern UI is pre-compiled from Java to JavaScript with something called GWT compiler. This compilation result is called the widget set and it contains the minified and obfuscated part of the Vardin UI that will eventually be loaded as a static JavaScript resource by the web browser. How the compilation is done and what kind of things should be compiled is described in this module. Some part of the code in this module has to do with the compilation time and compilation related dependencies that we don't want to deploy to our web server. Hence, we declare this stuff in this own module so that we can have better overall control of what is packaged here. Once we've declared all this, if we intend to deploy to single server that hosts the backend and the UI, we can wrap everything into one project that doesn't have any actual code, but just Maven module definition that depends on everything else. This is the only module that is of type war and also deployable. Everything else, except for the root project, can be of type char. Now, let's have a look how we could really do this with Maven. Alright, so now that we're clear with the theory, let's try to build the actual project foundation with our Eclipse. We will begin by creating a new Maven project. And this Maven project will now be the actual root project of our entire example application. We will begin by creating just a simple project so we don't select any archetype. After this, we will give it a group ID and artifact ID. In this case, the group ID could be, for example, compact example, and artifact could be root project. For now, we can just leave the version as 001 snapshot and packaging of type palm as we want to be able to have this project contain additional submodules. Let's name the project to be root and all the other information we can just leave empty. As a result, we are now given a project very simple foundation that has the group ID, the artifact ID, the version and type as we declared. All right, so in the theory part, I said that we could begin by declaring the actual backend module. The purpose of the backend module is to have things that have to do with our actual application logic, so the business logic, not the front end logic. So for this, let's create new Maven module and call it backend. Again, make this a simple project, so no archetype selection. From this, we can already have all the basic information correctly set up. So the group ID and the artifact ID can be as is. Version, again, a snapshot. And in this case, the packaging can simply be a jar, as we don't intend to deploy this project or this module as a standalone in our current environment. We can simply name this as the backend. What Maven will do for us in this case is that the modules tag is added with the backend module in it. Let's just clean that up a bit and then let's go see our backend module. So the backend module of course is completely empty and the generated POM XML now has the parent reference to our root project, the artifact ID and the name as we gave it. Okay, then the next thing would be to create our actual modding project, the things that have to do with the actual front-end part, so the interesting part from this product point of view. So again, let's select our root project and just say that we're making a new Maven module, which is now the front-end. Again, skip the archetype and go with the basic information so as we're gonna deploy this as part of a bigger deployable artifact with the deploy project we can have just as well the front end part packaged 
as char and name this as the front end. All right, as a result of this operation, if we now go back to our root project, we see that the front end module has been added into the modules list and new front end project or front end module is now appearing in our package explorer. And again, the information here corresponds to our current setup. So we have the parent, we have the artifact ID and the name as given in the wizard. All right. Um, at this stage, we don't yet have any Maven dependencies declared. So what we could do is that we start off by just setting the correct properties. So in the uh, root project, we can declare a couple of tags that have to do with properties. These properties are now shots that mainly declare the versions or, for example, the source encoding of our source code, as well as, for example, the um, Java compiler version. And of course, as we're using Vaadin 8, we will have to use the JDK 8. After having the initial properties correctly set up, what we could do is that we will introduce a dependency management section that imports Vaadin's bill of materials that allows us very easily to depend on any required Vaadin dependencies. The dependency management section we can insert also in our root project as it comes quite handy when other modules of the project want to depend on certain Vaadin resources. The bill of material in this case means that it is sort of a import scoped POM typed package that contains all the definitions for whatever type of VAR dependencies we might be requiring. And of course, as this is now a part of the dependency management section, it means by the Maven convention that these dependencies are not used as is, but only if submodules declare them by the group ID and artifact ID, only then they will become part of the actual project dependencies. All right. So now that we have declared our Vaadin version to be 806, we of course could use any Vaadin version. Uh, for example, uh, whenever new Vaadin versions are released, we could just very simply update our Vaadin version uh, property. And of course, now the Vaadin version will correspond to the version tag as declared in the dependency management bill of material dependency. So 806 in this case. Next thing, to actually have some reasonable dependencies in our project, we could start depending on Vaadin server in our frontend project. So we can do this by introducing a dependency section in which we introduce a dependency, which group ID is now from Vaadin, and the artifact ID is Vaadin server. As the root project is now having the dependency management section declared with Vaadin bill of material, the dependency definition here already knows that the Vaadin server should be using 806 version as it was declared in the parent project. Now in our Eclipse's package explorer, we can observe the Maven dependency section appearing that internally now contains the Vaadin server dependency as well as all the other transitive dependencies that Vaadin server is dependent on. 